This segment of the CU Podcast is sponsored by Skull Chess Games. Does your retro game collection need spicing up or maybe just reorganization? Well, you can head over to SkullChessGames.com where you can find sturdy and affordable display stands for your classic console games like the NES, Super Nintendo, N64, PS1, PS2, DS, Game Boy, Game Gear, and more. That covers really just about all of it. You want to show off your nice controllers? Skull Chess Games has you covered with controller stands for N64, Switch Joy-Cons, PlayStation, and more. There's even one for the Zapper. Most stands and displays offer the option of customizing them with the word or short phrase of your choice. Check out the more than 500 reviews and 5-star ratings and see what others have to say. Special offer right now. You can save 10% off by using code NESPUNK at checkout when you go to Skull Chess Games. Dot com. Again, go to SkullChessGames.com and use code NESPUNK to save 10%. So what are you waiting for? Go make your collection look nifty. All right, Ian. Yeah. We have not sp spoken about GameStop actually selling things in, in, in a while. It's been a while. Um, in particular, we have not spoken about their retro gaming sales, which started now almost, what, five years ago. A lot of it, uh, some of it happened when you were out sick in late 2016, talking about uh, the Retro Gaming Initiative. It was their plan, this is pre-George Sherman, see uh, AutoZone's guy, plan to turn things around and get into the retro gaming market and do, and do retro gaming trade-ins and sell them online. They had a, a big warehouse, I believe out in Texas, uh, where they, they shipped everything and cleaned the console and did all that stuff. And, and uh, of course, at the time, we both said, this is crazy. You have to be very specialized and knowledgeable to sell all these different retro, retro gaming consoles and know what you're doing. And then it quickly turned into, I mean, it became, you know, when you were gone, all the counterfeits that people were unfortunately being sent for expensive games. Right. Uh, yeah. Like even like, uh, you know, DuckTales 2 and Sculptor's Cut and people were doing videos saying, hey, this is a fake. I got it from games. So it became like a little, like almost mini genre of videos for probably like a six to eight month period like four years ago, mm -hmm. something like that. Ian probably saw something. We probably talked about a, a, a few of those. So they did trade-ins in every store. People were bringing in uh, games that were counterfeits and probably getting a lot more value, like Little Samson and things like that. So obviously with the pandemic hitting, uh, a lot less people are going to physical stores and a lot less trade-ins. But obviously even before that, the retro gaming, I think GameStop initiative was dying out way before that, before, yeah. before last year. So uh, uh, a follower named Jason emailed and asked, hey, how about an update about the retro gaming stuff at GameStop? Because I hadn't looked in probably a year or two at this, at their page. So when you go to uh, the, the retro gaming GameStop page, uh, well, on the top, you, you see uh, you see the Intellivision Amico uh, for sale for pre-order. That's definitely going to come out 10, 10, 21. The Atari VCS is up there. Um, supercharge your Nintendo. With the oh, it's the Eon Gaming uh, looks like uh, adapter HDMI adapter, so that's a new product. And there's the GameCube one N64 one, and then uh, a bunch of uh, newer Mega Cat Studio stuff is being uh, for sale. The, the you know the studio we talked about last week where they do uh, NES releases, uh, Genesis, Super Nintendo, um, and there isn't a, a lot of actual retro games that are left for sale on the page. No, when you actually go through and look, uh, there's there's a few things on here. Um, that you can actually, and I think you can actually buy. Uh, for instance, <laughs> yes, yes, I can actually buy if I wanted to. I could buy the entire anthology for Xbox. Uh, d disc only. Uh, I, well, yeah. It looks like. So the way this works is uh, for a long time, pe people were ordering these and getting like disc only or whatever, and they weren't. Mm -hmm. Basically, they. I, I think they initially showed the original box art, but so much of the stuff was traded in loose and sold disc only that when you actually look at the listings online now, they just show the disc. You, you would assume that it was out of bo box or case, and if you were sent the box or case, it was a bonus, right. basically. Um, and you can also get a copy of Jack and Daxter uh, disc only for the PlayStation 2 for $5. Um, but then they have a lot of things up here that... Uh, were probably like some of the bigger sellers for them at the time. Always knew that the Nintendo stuff would be big sellers for them. So you can't, there are still placeholder spots here for Kirby's Air Ride at $39.99, which is 
uh, that disc only. Uh, Pokemon Emerald for $59.99, which if it was actually in stock and legit would be a steal of a price on it right now. Um, Who knows if that's the real one, though? Right. Pokemon <laughs> Fire. But you can't buy it anyway is what I'm getting at. Like, they, they have... Oh, you can't buy it when you click on it? No. They have Double Dash up here for 40 You can't buy it. You can't buy Pokemon Emerald at 60 when you click on it. You can't buy Fire Red when you click on it for 35 Oh, I can't buy the Super Smash Brothers Melee disc. No, of course I not. Add it my cart. That's what I'm getting at. Like, the, uh, most of this stuff, you cannot buy. These are just placeholders for what was probably the more popular stuff. Oh, no. Um, Something like Fire Red selling for thirty four ninety nine is actually pretty cheap for that game right now. That game can go for easily a hundred. Um, can I buy any of this? Like I said, you can buy the first two. If you look at it, the one, like the prices that actually say pre-owned next to it. So the Atari Anthology and the Jack and Daxter collection, you can click oh, on Oh, I can and click buy. that. Okay. These other ones, you cannot. Like Diddy Kong Racing? No, you cannot. Oh, nope, not available. Yeah, you can't buy it. And there are some also, you know, on the bottom, like more like this. So like, oh, you click on da Jack and Daxter. More like this. There's some other like original Xbox games on the bottom, Dead to Rights, Wipeout XL. If you click on those, can I add? No. Oh, no, you can add that one. So there are ones here and there, but the, the fact of the matter is they're, they've are they basically gotten rid of their segmentation of like, oh, here's all this console, here's all Nintendo, here's all Super, here's all Xbox. They had grand ideas that, this, that they were going to have a retro section that you could navigate like their modern section. Click on a system, have all the games come up. It never took off that way. Um, I think the, the fact that trade-ins um retro trade-ins for a long time were limited to only certain locations um the uh lack of certainty uh the, the i mean they just they stopped even trying to test for things like uh looking for counterfeits and things like that um that's what i was trying to say i'm sorry about the the Game Boy. They sell them at these low prices because they know they're probably going to get so, a bunch of returns because what when they even had them in stock, they were mostly counterfeit. So they are still segmented. I, I, I look, you have to like click through and then go like, okay, it's like video dash game slash retro dash gaming slash GameCube. Now it's segmented out. It's basically like, it's almost like it's not its own filter, but you have to click around to get to this stuff now in order to see, in theory, what's available for sale. In case it wasn't um, obvious, there, but the not availability of this section yeah. is awful. But 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 most of the stuff I'm clicking on this, the GameCube games now. I'll click on like six randomly. I'll see which ones are available, just to see. None of those are going to be available. Systems not available for the silver one. Uh, Sonic Adventure Two is not available. Uh, Mario Party Seven is not available. Uh, Legend of Zelda is not available. The Master Quest Sonic Heroes is not available. So even the cheaper games are not available. Collector's Edition Zelda is not available. Pokemon Coliseum is not available. Mario Party is not available. Or excuse me, Paper Mario is not available. So that's the point. It's like now. There's just not this stuff. I'm gonna do NES anything, just for the hell of Anything it. that they had at this the price points that they're listing would be. Uh, there's no way it would have lasted through pandemic. So what I'm getting at is it's it's all gone. Basically anything they had was sold, and they're not replenishing it. That makes sense. I, I mean they. I, I can't I, find the Super Nintendo section. So I'm pretty sure they've just left the retro game section to die i don't think they're i don't know if they're still taking stuff in okay but it's obvious they're not really spending any time on updating this site so when i click on nintendo so nintendo shows up not nes uh as a as a section um most of it is newer stuff it's it's the it's the stuff from mega cat studios for the nes an nes system for 60 dollars is not available uh super mario 3 mike tyson's punch out legend of zelda contra terminator 2 let's see if any of those are available uh, not available, not available, uh, not available, Super Mario 3, not available, punch out. You're right, the prices are, are pre-pandemic, $18 for yeah, Zelda. Yeah, they're all pre-pandemic so, prices. They have not So this might have been dead for two years. We just haven't known. Contra's $20, that's pre-pandemic. That's where it was at the, at the, at the fall, basically, bef before, uh, before 2020. Terminator 2, wow. Can I filter on available? Like, I mean... In stock, I guess you click in stock, and you see what's available. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, none of nothing's available except for the Mega Cat games. Nothing. Yeah, nothing's available. I'm gonna do Genesis now for the hell of it. So I guess what we're trying to say is that it's officially over. If it wasn't before the pandemic, it might have been. Uh, you know, it would have happened anyway. If not, it, yeah, I don't know if they've officially put a bullet in it, but they've definitely they're definitely not focusing uh, on it. I mean, the fact that I can't even find the Sega Genesis section. Or the, or I like try to guess what the Super Nintendo section is. I guess if I put in Super Mario World, can I get to the Super Nintendo section? I just want to I just want to see what what even the placeholders are. 
and I can't even find it. Oh, here we go. Super Mario World. Okay, I found it. Uh, oh, Super Dash Nintendo. I'll just do that one real quick. Because there was, there was always a lot of NES and, and there was a decent amount of Super. Okay, what is actually in stock? Let's just click that. Uh, nothing. There's there's just Mega Cat games and the Return of Double Dragon is available. The one that came out, what was that? Uh, when did that come out? Two years ago? Or was that re-released uh, two years ago? Which one? Return of Double Dragon, which was the which was this one for Super, and they re-released it. Oh. Was that two years ago? Uh, I forget. So that one's available. So technically... Oh, compa that's right. Compatible with aftermarket SNES systems only. We covered that. Yeah. It's like that, two years ago. weird one. Mm -hmm. uh, they spelled compatible wrong on uh, GameStop site. Compatible with aftermarket... As Come on! GameStop, use a Grammarly plugin. Compatible. That's my new, new Yeah, that's term. right. The the retroism uh release of it. Yeah, that could only be that was a that was a nightmare. That was a story. Yeah. We're like, that's ridiculous. That's absurd. <laughs> yeah, and how do we forget that? Wow, there's too many topics. So anyway, so I guess what the moral of the story is that uh they made they probably made a little bit of money, but once they invested all the time and effort into this, it probably was enough for it to be worth their time. And we don't even know. This is what someone brought up to me. We don't know. I'm hoping with all my heart, I think they ended up when they really got out of this stuff, they did not throw this stuff out. They liquidated to larger online uh, retro retailers. That, yes. That's what the word was a few years ago. Yeah. I think they were starting to do that mm -hmm. before it was totally Places dead. This is like, I don't know if it, like a Lukey games, games, JJ Oldies, DK Oldies, or, DK whatever. Oldies. I don't know. J, there's like two or three of them that, you know, they go, they, the, the ones that use the, you know, uh, all the bots to basically buy the lots, which we learned was a thing. It was yeah. like, there's a reason why all those lots get bought out by, you know, they all have seller. Allegedly, they have different buying accounts from selling accounts to do that. So, the, well, they, that, that's, that's the end of GameStop Retro, I guess. What else can you say? Not much.